and it turned out that God used that or something they said or then you can speak into their lives and you can believe things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we will give you praise. We will give you praise, oh God. We will give you praise, hallelujah. Nothing's gonna stop our praise, oh God. Nothing is gonna stop our praise, oh Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name, oh God. Father, thank you, oh God. Thank you, God, for the light of our salvation. Thank you for loving us so much. And Lord, we pray that that light right now, God, will shine as we open up your word. Father, speak to each heart, oh God. We need to hear from you today. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You got one more praise in you? I know you do. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to get right uh, to the message. I um, was praying and, um, you know, it's not time to throw out a message. <laughs> we need to hear from God. I'm going to say amen. You know, amen. the word of God speaks to us. I know those of you that uh, prayerfully read your word, God has been speaking to you. How many can say that? God has been speaking to you right through his word. Amen. He does that uh, when we're listening. You know, and I was, I was thinking about things and uh, my mind went to, uh, you ever buy something, you know, and, and you're looking for a good deal. How many love to get good deals Amen. right on things, right? I, I Now with the internet, it's, it's a lot easier because I hate shopping. So well, before the internet, I used to go and just make the best of the first place I go. But now I can shop around and see where I can get the item I want at the best price. Yeah. But sometimes they have the item I want and it says refurbished. Mm. Uh -huh. And it's a lot cheaper, right? Yes. And you're tempted, right? Because it's the same thing that you want. But you're a little, eh, do I want a refurbished one? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're a little uh, um, leery, right, of getting the refurbished. I mean, they usually work well. But, but the thing about refurbished is that for some reason, they don't guarantee it like a new one, right? When you get a new item, hey, no problem. You, got, you want a year guarantee? We'll warranty it, right? And the refurbished says it's just like new. It's just like new. It's the same thing, just like new. It's refurbished. Uh, but you got 30 to 90 days. <laughs> Why are you so confident about it? It's not the same as brand new, am I right? When I want to read to you something, because what we're going to talk about today is so important for everything that's going on today in our world. Our world is going, uh, well, what it, the world is doing what the world usually does. There have been periods where the world has gone nuts more than others. It's always nuts. As a matter of fact, you and I were in the world and we were nuts. Right? And God got a hold of us and, and set us straight, right? You ever, you ever think back on what you used to do or how you used to live and you shake your head? Yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? What was, what was that all about? When God brings sanity to you and wisdom and a different outlook on life, amen? I want to read a portion of scripture to you. Very, very, very important. They're all important. But for today, the Lord wants to speak to us to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to be reading verses 14 to 21. And this is how it reads. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore... We regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. How many say amen? amen. The old has passed away. Behold, a new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I want to make some statements today. These statements are not my opinion. My opinion is as valuable as yours. It's worth two cents. I'm giving you what God said, and then we're going to explore it a little bit. Statements from the word of God that I just read. First of all, you are dead to who you were before receiving Jesus into your heart. If you receive Jesus in your heart, right now you, were, you are dead to who you were before receiving him into your heart. Everything about you that you were before is gone. Or, or let me rephrase it. Everything about you before you receive Christ is supposed to be gone. Everything about you is supposed to have changed. Your, the way you look at things, your perspective on life, your worldview must have changed if Christ has come to live in your life. The way you speak has, must have changed. The way that you walk to places where you go must have changed. The material you read must have changed. What your eyes look at must have changed. The way you speak to your husband or your wife must have changed. The way you speak to your children must have changed. Children, the way you speak to your parents must have changed. It changes everything about everything. 2 Corinthians 5.14 from what I read, it says, for the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died. Who's the one who's died for all? Jesus Christ. Therefore, all have died. So now what? So now you live for Jesus. What does that mean? You don't do what you or what your old self wanted to do. You do, ready? You do what he tells you to do. You know, when I was a, a, a child... And, uh, you know, my, my dad was a disciplinarian, so was my mom. They disciplined me and my sister, my sister and I. And sometimes, uh, do you remember this, adults and children that are here? You probably have heard this. I used to hear it. Why are you doing this? Why do I have to do this? Because I'm telling you to do it. You ever hear that? Why? Because I said so. Right? So guess what? God tells us what to do. He tells us what to do. And why do we tell children, if we're not so messed up in our head, why do we tell children what to do? So that they can live right, so that they can be blessed, right? That's why we tell children what to do. That's why I was told what to do. And if I didn't do what my dad said, guess what? And not that. See this belt I got on? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I used to get it. But me, see, God made me wise. I used to go to his closet and take his belt and throw them out the window. We used to live on the fourth floor. And so when I did one of mine, you know, and he would go, where's my belt? I don't know. <laughs> Which gave me time to run and hide. We live for Jesus now and we do what he says. Second Corinthians 5.15. Listen. And he died for all that those who live might no longer, ready, live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised. His word, by the way, you want to know what he's telling you what to do? Read your word. How many of you have gotten instruction from God in what to do? How many have, you, have ever been doing something you shouldn't have done and you read this and God said, uh-uh. Don't do that. How many? Raise your hand. This word will speak to you. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you through his word as well. 
You must be done. Listen to me. If you're dead, right, if we died with Christ, you must be done with everything that pertains to the flesh. Everything that pertains to the flesh, you must be done with. That's not my opinion. That's what God says, 2 Corinthians 5.16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. We don't know each other after the flesh. We don't. Everyone in this room who's received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God extracted you from wherever you are, and he brought you, he adopted you and put you in his family. So now you, he did that for me too, so you are my family. That's just not a nice thing that I say, you are my family. You are the ones that God has in my heart. When I pray, guess who I pray for? I pray for my family. Now, my earthly family is my family as well because they know Christ Jesus. So we have that relationship. But I'll tell you this. If they didn't, I would still love them. And, of course, I would still maintain contact. But we wouldn't have the fellowship we, did, we do now if they didn't know Christ, it would be impossible. I'd love them, but I, I'd try to tell them about Jesus. But fellowship, it wouldn't be. Right? Because what light does fellowship, fellowship have with darkness? Right? So I am with the people of God because that's the family he put me in. And I'm so glad for the family of God. The family of God is awesome. Amen. In fact, we have what the world's trying to figure out to have. And let me tell you this, it's not going to happen in the world. Not until Jesus comes back and straightens all things out, and I'll tell you why. Because we all have sinful hearts. All of us, even in this room, we've been saved, and our hearts have been changed, hopefully. But our hearts are sick. They're sick. What comes into this heart and this mind without Christ is sick. We just look. We, we, you know what? Someone was saying, and it's true. That if you pass a law of something bad that you can do, guess what people would do? I'm sure, I'm sure that if they pass a law that it's okay to kill people if you're angry, guess what people would do? Oh, mad at you. They would do it. Just look, just look at all the things that whatever you permit, people will do. Because we have we are in a depraved situation. Thank God that Christ came to save us from ourselves. How many say amen? So we can't be recognized or regard anything or, or consider anything as it pertains to the flesh. Why? First of all, because our bodies are temporary. This is only a temporary body. You know, uh, I don't know, um, you know, what color I am because, you know, I'm a mix of a lot of stuff. So... You know, they say about, my, my parents are from Puerto Rico, and, and from Puerto Rico they say they're not white, they're not black, they're not brown, they're not uh, Taino Indian, they're all of these. We have a mix of everything in, in, in that nation because a lot of people came through there, right? So, I, you know, who, who are my, I, I woke up one day and I was the son of some people that were from the island of Puerto Rico. Does that make me special? Puerto Rican power? <laughs> hey, listen. God made you perfect. The Bible says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are all masterpieces. As a matter of fact, when God made you, that's it. There's nobody else like you, and that's a fact. Out of the billions and billions of people that live on this planet and the billions that are no longer here because they passed away, nobody has ever been like you. That he made you, and I don't know how he does that, and he keeps making people different. We're all different. We all have the same issues. Right? But sin makes us think that. But one day, this body's going to die. Right? And this shell is going to come out. It's going to go in the earth. But inside there's a spirit. I love the way God created the world. He is so creative. 
my goodness gracious. He made, uh, if just look at the world and all the different uh, the ways he made the mountains, they're one color, the, the green grass and the flowers. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want you to think I'm soft, but my wife has been trying to convince me to get hanging plants for the front of the house. And I don't want the hanging plants because I got to water them. They got to be watered. You know, every time you go out, oh, I got to water the flowers. I got to water the flowers. You don't water them for one day, they start, you know, they look all... So I, I resisted, but she, you know, she has a way. My wife has a way. Everybody and husbands, you know what I'm talking about? They just, you know, just keep, you know, keep a little pressure on. Keep going. Okay, you know what? Let's get hanging flowers. So I have hanging flowers now. And, I, you know, after I got the hanging flowers, they looked beautiful. And she wanted to get a pot, a big pot of flowers, you know, like from the front. And I said, no, no, let's not get the pot. But after I saw the hanging flowers, I said, hey, babe, let's go to the store and get that pot. <laughs> Because it, it added so much. God makes things beautiful. Right? But guess what? He made us. We're spirit like he is. We happen to be in this body. One day the, that body is going to pass away. 2 Corinthians 5.1. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. So we don't look at things after the flesh because our body is temporary. Secondly, because nothing good comes from the flesh. Did you know that? Everything that pertains to the flesh, well, Romans 7, 18 says, For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. As a matter of fact, this is a problem for me. This is a problem. For me, I have to do away with the flesh, what this wants. The flesh needs things. Like, for example, it asks for food. That's appropriate. Uh, I have a little water up there because the flesh asks for water, right? It asks for things. And a lot of the things that it asks for are inappropriate. Some of the things that it asks for are down and outright evil. As a matter of fact, if you follow your flesh, you will soon destroy yourself. It's just the way it is. That's our default position. So there's nothing good that comes from it. And also, we don't look for things after the flesh because God sees differently than we do. You remember when Samuel, right, he went to, the, God told him he was going to have to find another king because King Saul had gone off because of his flesh. And he told Samuel, go to Jesse's house. I'm going to... I'm going to get the next king from there. So the first uh, man he saw, I think it was Eliab. But I think that was his name. Uh, I, I might be mistaken. But he was the oldest, tall, handsome, good-looking, strong. And Samuel thought, Tech, stop, stop the press. No more looking. That's the guy. That's the guy. And look what, what God told him. First Samuel 16, 7. People look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. As a matter of fact, we don't even regard Jesus after the flesh, according to Scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.16. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Now, Jesus said to his disciples, it's better if I leave. Now, I was thinking about something that I hadn't thought about before. The man saying this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul happened to be alive during the time of Jesus. We only hear about him afterwards, after he rose to heaven, after he died and rose from the grave, and then after 40 days rose to be with the Father. We only hear about the Apostle Paul then, but he was alive while Jesus walked on the earth. So I was thinking he probably was one of the Pharisees that used to try to trap him and try to confuse him because he hated Jesus and he hated Christians so much so to, to such a degree that he wanted to see them dead. Now that's a lot of hate. The best that he could do with them is throw them in jail. But he wanted to see them dead. That's the guy who's saying to us now, we don't regard Christ any longer according to the flesh. 
Think about it. When Jesus was here in the flesh, the apostle Paul, who was just Paul back then, or Saul, that was his name, he didn't want anything to do with Jesus while Jesus was in the flesh. When did the apostle Paul find Christ? It was when the Holy Spirit knocked him off his horse. You remember he was on his way to do what he was doing, to persecute Christians. And the voice of Jesus came to him supernaturally. So not, something knocked him off his horse. A Holy Spirit slap. Boom. And off he fell. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You remember the story. So the apostle Paul his life was changed afterwards, not while Jesus was in the flesh. So we don't even regard Jesus after the flesh. He rejected him in the flesh, but received him when Jesus spoke to him by the Spirit. How many say amen? So we are completely dead to who we were before we met Jesus Christ. And that's the whole package. Everything that you were, everything that you were about is now gone. How many agree and say amen? amen? You're not agreeing with me, you're agreeing with Scripture. Amen. amen? Secondly, you are a new creation. Brand spanking new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, let me ask here, who is in Christ in this building? Raise your hand. If anyone is in Christ, you are are a new creation. The old has passed away. Did you hear that? The old has passed away. When someone dies, we say they passed away. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And it says anyone. That means it doesn't matter what class of people you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. You are, it doesn't matter what language you speak or what level of intelligence you have. You are a brand new creation. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation by default. You know, the disciples, I love the disciples. They were a collection of, of different kinds of people, but a lot of them were fishermen. And I'm a fisherman myself. And I think Mike is around somewhere. He's a fisherman too. We talk about, but I don't know if you've experienced this yourself, but when I go fishing, I've been fishing with uh, fishermen on, on boats. And for some reason, fishermen are ornery. I don't know if it's the salt from the ocean. They're just salty people. You know, and, and so, uh, they, and, and, and for some reason, not too smart. Now, I just outed myself because I told you I love to fish and I'm a fisherman. But God chose a good number of them that were fishermen, right? N level of intelligence wasn't, you know, it was the, the elevator didn't go all the way up to the top floor. But he used them. And, and when they spoke after the, the, Jesus had gone up to heaven and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when they would speak to the educated class, which were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they confounded them. They confounded them. And, and, and they were saying secretly, we can hear the conversation. I love the Bible. It even tells you the side conversations that people were having through the Holy Spirit. God reveals all things, right? They were saying, how, you know, how are these guys talking to us? How? And they, it says they took note that they were with Jesus. So in other words, they knew something had changed. You're, they were a new creation. The Apostle Paul, excellent example. He goes from hating Christians and murdering and putting them in jail to being the lead in, in sharing the gospel among the people that he hated. He hated Gentiles. He hated Gentiles. He was a Jew of Jews, a Pharisee of Pharisees. And now God gives him, oh, yeah? Hey, let me, here's your mission, by the way. Go preach to the Gentiles. Amen. Anyone who is willing qualifies to become a new creation. How many say amen? Here's another statement for you. God makes the creation, not you. In other words, you don't change yourself. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says this. All this is from who? All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself. 
We cannot create change in ourselves. Romans 7, 14 and 15, the very Apostle Paul that I was just speaking about who God changed says this through the Holy Spirit. So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. You ever try to change yourself? What a miserable uh, attempt that is. I, I try to do that early on in my Christian walk. I try to do right and live right. And I would just trip up. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Or am I talking to a room full of angels? <laughs> Let me know because I'll take off my shoes. No, right? It, it's a mess, isn't it? Are you trying in your own strength? To do right, how about something that keeps tripping you up and you do it and you say, oh, God, forgive me. I, I won't do that again. I promise. And then not 24 hours goes by and you find yourself doing the same thing. How many know what I'm talking about? That's a miserable experience. Why? Because we cannot change ourselves. It's God who changes us. Amen. Here's just another thing I want to tell you. God does not refurbish you. You're not a refurbished version of who you were before. You know what they do with refurbish, right? They replace some parts. If something was scratched, they buff it out. And they do, you know, and then they, they put it back out there and hope for the best. You're not refurbished. He doesn't work with old material. He doesn't uh, 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 just sanctify your flesh. Your flesh has to die and then he sanctifies your spirit. He doesn't work with the heart that you had before you received Christ. You know what he does? He gives you a brand new heart. He can't work with the old heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27 says this. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. If there's any way that we're going to live the way God tells us to live, it's for him to give us a new heart and to put in us a new spirit because that new heart and that new spirit will follow God. That new heart and that new spirit will follow the decrees of the Lord. That's the hope. That's why this is so amazing. There's no other story like it on the earth. There's no other religion that can tell you that. Every other place is, go ahead, try, do your best, and we'll see at the end if you did it or not. We'll weigh your, 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 the balance of what you do on scales. And if there's one more sin than what, one more good thing that you did, you're cooked. That means everybody's cooked. This is the only news it's called the good news, the gospel, that says you cannot do it. Let's just admit it. I will do it in you if you let me. I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. And you will find yourself living different if you know how you were before and you see God made changes in you. You look back and you say, how did God do that? I know who I was, but I know who I am now. I still have a way to go, but what a change he's made in my life. How many can testify that God has made a change in your life? <laughs> Timmy, if you come. God makes the new creation, not you. I'm so glad about that because I can't do it. I confess I can't do it. I tried. How many here have tried? How many have tried? You tried to do good. Yeah. Come on, Rach, be honest. Yeah. I, I, listen, I tried, I tried. And then I realized I can't. And when I realized I can't and I asked God to help me, he gave me the help I needed. And he's still, he's still transforming me from glory to glory to glory. And he's transforming you as well. And I want to finish with this, and this is very important. Because of all of this now, because you now are a new creation, the dead is gone, you, you died, that's gone. And, and, and God makes you brand new, and he, he's the one who created this. You didn't, he did it. Because of that now, Jesus commissions you as his ambassador. He commissions each one of you 
as his ambassador. You now represent Jesus. Do, do, do you go around in your life with thinking about that, wherever you go? That's why it, it's kind of, you know, a little heavy because if I'm at Safeway and someone cuts in the line, I got to represent Jesus. I know what I like to do. Right? Hey, hey, wait a minute there. Just who do you think you are jumping in front of me? Right? But I can't do that. Why? I'm under constraints. I, I, I don't represent myself. I, I'm now an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere, not just at church. Are you kidding? We're just here to get built up. So that we can go wherever God sends us as his ambassadors. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. That's the first step. You got to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Today, this earth will not implode yet because the church is still here. And we are the righteousness of God. And we have to represent him as the righteousness of God and teach people about righteousness from the word of God. Let me tell you something about ambassadors so that you can understand how this works. An ambassador represents the country and more specifically the leader who sent him. An ambassador doesn't go in his own name. He goes representing the leader who sent him. And I say the leader because if from a country, if you're in Iran or in Russia or the United States, the ambassador represents the leader of that country. They do and say what that leader is telling them to do and say. So now, let's think about us as ambassadors of Christ. Who do we represent? The leader. We don't represent ourselves. We represent the leader, Jesus Christ. An ambassador does not speak to please his audience. Jesus speaks from his word and he has spoken. So I can't now say things to make you feel great about yourself if they're not found in scripture because I want you to like me or I want you to be pleased with me. An ambassador doesn't speak what pleases the audience. An ambassador speaks what the Lord tells him or her to speak. How many say amen? And that's it. Shut the mouth afterward. As they say in French, fermez la bouche. Cierre la boca. I don't know how you say it in Italian. What is it? What she said. <laughs> An ambassador does not speak on his own authority. We don't speak on our authority. We speak on the authority of the God of our salvation, of the one who purchased us with his own blood. Our words have to be authorized by him, not our own. An ambassador doesn't express his own ideas and opinions about what the leader is saying. And let me close with this. An ambassador speak what he has been commissioned to speak. Each one of you, if you have Jesus Christ living in your heart, each one of you has been commissioned by God. You remember the Great Commission? How many know the Great Commission? Raise your hand. It's at the end of Matthew, the last chapter. And Jesus is commissioning. By the way, he wasn't speaking to pastors or evangelists he was speaking to his disciples how many disciples are there in the building how many 
followers of Christ. So he has commissioned each one of you to speak on his behalf. On his behalf, not your behalf. What God is telling you to speak. And here's God's way. Let me tell it to you. It's reconciliation. With him first, then with our fellow human beings. By the way, it's the only way. Listen to me, church. It's the only way that peace and justice will be had anywhere. There is no other way. There is no human way. We have the light. We have the light. And if there's ever a time when that light needs to be shining, it's now. That light is in you. That light is in you. Let's bow our heads. Right now, I'm just going to ask whoever is the Lord is speaking to. And there's some things you need to lay down. And um, you, you, you know what? If you're a Christian here, you need to confess you're an ambassador. If God is speaking to you today and you want to represent him well, would you raise your hand? I want to pray for us this afternoon. We need God. I see your hands. Yeah, lift up your hands high. You want to speak. You want to be, you, you receive the commission. Receive, you're receiving the commission of God. Raise your hand right now. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, you see your people, your sons and daughters, oh God. Lord, uh, your family, Lord God. Right now, Father, uh, receiving the commission, Lord God. Uh, perhaps, Lord God, we sometimes get distracted or, or perhaps we don't even think of it that way. But Lord, your word is clear. This is not man's word. This is your word, oh God. And Father, you're commissioning us, oh God, with a message of love and reconciliation and peace, oh God. Lord, the very thing, oh God, that, Lord, the world is trying desperately, Lord God, to achieve, but, Lord, going at it all the wrong way. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would use us, your ambassadors, God. Commission us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Anoint us, oh God, to do, oh God, the much-needed work in the world among those that don't know you, oh, Lord Jesus. God, make us who we're supposed to be. God, we are supposed to be the light of the world. You said you are the light of the world, speaking to us, your disciples. You said that we are the salt of the earth. And, God, we know, Father, because we all use salt. Salt changes things, oh, God. Some of us, God, reach for the salt before we even taste our food. Salt, salt also purifies, oh God. Salt cures, oh Lord God. Lord, salt initially hurts an open wound, but then it begins to heal that wound, oh God. Father, use your people as salt, oh God, and light. Help us, oh God, not to be confused and not have confusing messages, oh Lord Jesus. God, help us to listen to the leader, our leader who's sending us out with your message, God, not anybody else's message, your message, God. You know just how to speak to our heart. You know just what you want us to say. And God, if we're listening, you would use us for your glory, Lord Jesus. God, we lay everything down. We confess that we're yours. The debt is gone. We're a new creation. You created it, God, and you get to say how that creation is going to be and, Lord, what you want us to do. And Father, that brings life to us because you're a good God. You don't do it, oh God, to, to just boss us around even though you could because you are God. You do it because you're a loving Father. And God, that is the way to life, oh God. You are the way, the truth, and the life. That's why you want us to follow you, God. You want to bless your people, Lord Jesus. So God, we confess this all to you, Father. Commission us. Use us as your ambassadors in Jesus' name. With our heads still bowed, if there's someone here or at home or watching anywhere where uh, you, you, you're not a follower of Christ, you're not a disciple, or maybe you once was, you once were, and you went off the road, 
and, and today God is speaking to your heart and you want to come back or you want to receive Christ for the first time, if you're here, you can let me know who you are by raising your hand. If you are there at home, you know who you are. Just raise your hand so God can see it. He knows your heart anyway. But if there's someone, anyone who wants to receive Christ, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You're going to repeat it after me and the Lord will hear it as you make it your own prayer and you will be saved. You will have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Anybody here in the building that needs to make that decision? Amen. I'm trusting someone there at home or in an office or wherever you are that God is speaking to your heart. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're about to do. Everyone repeat after me. If you're making that decision, say, Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, I recognize you as the Son of God, the Messiah, the one that was to come. And Lord Jesus, I know, Father, that you died on the cross. And I know that you rose on the third day. I believe that. And Lord, today I recognize, God, that I'm one of those people. God, just like everyone else who has done many things wrong, but today, I am confessing them to you. I, I confess that I'm a sinner and that I need you. I need salvation. Lord, I'm praying that you forgive me, oh God, and cleanse me with the blood that you spilt on Calvary. Make me new, Lord God, just like your word says. And Lord, today, I surrender my heart to you. I give you my life. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for those, oh God, uh, who have prayed that prayer. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would begin a new, Lord God, life. Lord, the old now is immediately gone. Lord, there are things you want to work out in these lives, oh God, and you're going to do it. But Lord, right now they are a brand new creation according to your word. And we celebrate that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh God. We pray all of this. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, you know what?